welcome to another edition of the DigiSouth Sports Show right here on HighlandStats.com. I'm your host, Earl Bist, and then joining me yet again is Jason Juggling J. Ford. Woosa. <sighs> Woosa. Yeah, we need a lot of Woosa right now, <laughs> boys. Well, today we're going to be talking about the Bermuda National Cricket Team going down to Division 5, being relegated from Division 4. Uh, the area permit meet will take place on Friday at the National Sports Center. Mm -hmm. Had a press conference earlier today. Also, the Department of Youth, Sport and Recreation had a, uh, a four-module over three-day um, coaching seminar. Brought in Calix Crab, a former Major League Baseball player. Got mm -hmm. a chance to speak with him. Um, and, of course, the Bermuda International Football Festival got underway last evening at the National Sports Center, Double Hatter. And this coming Saturday at the National Sports Center, which will be a busy weekend for them, mm -hmm. um, we'll see international rugby with Bermuda taking on US South, USA South. But we'll get to all of that after this message from our sponsor. You may have heard, Digital is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the Home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's Fiber Internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office. And you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the... Well, Jay, on Friday night into Saturday morning, um, Bermuda were up against it, against Malaysia, the final match of the ICC World Cricket League Division 4. Um, at 55 for two, rain halted play. Um, and officials got together and realized that there were two matches that were of valuable importance and decided instead of having a playoff championship, they will replay the games that were needed to decide whether or not um, teams will stay up or teams will go um, get promoted. A win for Bermuda with their run rate against Malaysia would have seen them stay in the division. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, that didn't happen. But um, the runs in which Bermuda got forced Malaysia to stay in Division <laughs> 4 as they finished on six points with the leaders, uh, the first place team and the second place team. But um, overall, it's got to be a little disappointing. Um, well, not just a little disappointing, but disappointing the fact that we find ourselves now down in Division 5. And where do we go from here? I think that's a million dollar question right there. Um, where do we want to go from here? No, I honestly believe that's up to. Because if we continue the same um, path, mm, mm. <laughs> you're only going. Or uh, submarine sinking. Yes. <laughs> so we have to honestly ask ourselves where do we want to go from here? And, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Yeah. Well, I, I believe all stakeholders have to get together and decide what's the best way forward. And I'm, when I say all, I'm talking, the, associate, the, the, the board must listen, the players must listen, the clubs must listen, and the government must listen. The people on the outside, if you're not involved in the club, it's gonna be hard for people to listen to you. Yes. You know what I mean? Because th there's, everybody's got criticism. And understandable. Yeah. Everybody's got criticism. Yeah. But the only way to help is to get involved. Yeah, it's, and, and you said it, it's the stakeholders have to, have to, have to come to some, not only a short term plan, but a long term mm -hmm. plan. And mm -hmm. I think we're just, probably, probably since probably 45, six years now, we've just been winging it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as tournaments are, are going. And just give a prime example uh, Malaysia. Mm hmm. Fanutu yeah. had traveled to Australia prior to this tournament, mm -hmm. been together for numerous months right. prior to this tournament. Playing outdoor. Playing outdoor. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas we're coming together a couple of days a week, mm-hmm. going up at BHS and in indoor nets. Mm-hmm. You had a few game or a few tournaments we went to, but but it's 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 what was the preparation like going to those tournaments? Because obviously, and, but er, but what I'm saying, this is not the first time. No, no, no. This has been like this has been the norm. <laughs> norm. Yeah, in preparation. In preparation. Mm-hmm. And, and the unfortunate thing is, Jay. The players take all the blame. And unfortunately, okay, let's go here. The players that go. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because there are some onuses on players that do not go. Yes, indeed. I'm 100% behind that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think we can leave that out. Mm-hmm. They know why. Right. There has to be some type of um, agreement. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate to bring this up again, but it might have to be financial in- incentives mm-hmm. because we're at that point now. Right, right. Um, I've heard a lot of banter of expats again, mm-hmm. which we've spoke many, many times, times yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not only to for the team, but also for training and yeah. playing against me just on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like SOS, save our souls, because we're in dire straits. Now, let's put it into context, because it's not all doom and gloom when no. it comes to Bermuda. Yeah. And, and we're, we're dropping down to Division 5. Mm-hmm. Now, when there was a tournament here, and what division was that when the tournament was here? 2000 and... It was after the World Cup. 2000, what was it, 2010, 2011. Yeah, what, what, what division were we in then? Division 2. It was in Division 2. Mm-hmm. So there's a team that we're going to join mm-hmm. in Division 5 that mm-hmm. was in Division 2 yeah. back then. Yeah. But we don't talk about that. No, 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 no. No, we don't. Yeah. yeah. So there's other teams who have had Falling a from, Yeah. With, with plenty of numbers to pick from, too. Plenty of numbers mm-hmm. to pick from. If, if you want to look it up, the team I'm talking about today is Italy. Mm-hmm. So, in saying that, our boys are going up against a lot of teams that have what we call expats mm-hmm. playing. And we're, we're just we're, we're going to a gunfight with a knife. Yeah. Well, bare hands. And, well, that's not right. That's our team, I mean, they are team, whatever they're doing, automatic, whatever. Reload. <laughs> well, come here, can we kind of get you, pick you? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, yeah. it's, you know, and it's got to be frustrating for the guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, they got a trip out of it, but right. still, it's got to be frustrating for the guys. Mm-hmm. And I really want to take this opportunity to thank Gennaro Tucker. Mm-hmm. Come back out of retirement. Right. Uh, the love he has not only for the game but what he wanted to do for countryside for the countryside Mm -hmm. and right to the last game Mm -hmm. even injured yeah cramping and you know sometimes you know when we look at statistics Mm -hmm. it doesn't tell the whole story no it doesn't it doesn't and you know you see the X month you say okay you got a half century you say oh well that's a lot of balls for Gennaro Tucker Mm. come on against uh, 60 or about 111 balls. That's yeah. not something. I took 19 balls to get up to Mark. But then when you realize... The trouble we were... 36, 37 for, for 6. Not only that, both these guys were struggling yeah. with injuries. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what they done, and the, the whole mindset from the coach was saying, look, let's just battle. Since we was in trouble, mm-hmm. let's at least battle out the urban. Right. And I think those guys... And it, <laughs> Interesting enough, they became heroes. But <laughs> <laughs> well, not to the Malaysian people. <laughs> <laughs> but even in saying that, Gennaro ended up winning the MVP. Right. In right. a losing note. Yeah. yeah. In a losing note. Yeah. So I just want to say, Gennaro, I want to thank you again because you retired before. Mm-hmm. But I do want to say thank you again, just like we did for Lionel Can, mm-hmm. also for DM Minus. I just want to say thank you again. And uh, please, please do not go too far away from. Um, the setup because who knows we might still need we still need you there. And that, and leadership off the field yeah his ability to get into players minds he has that he has that gift 
And like you said, hopefully he doesn't go away from the game. I hope he does because ICC had the video with one of our, our sharp catcher slips. Mm. You, know, you can go check it online. I'm mm. um, off the burling of Dion Stubble. Mm. Yeah, he caught this. Uh, caught a first slip. Right. I mean, he still got it. Yeah, yeah. he still got it. Now, how long will he be able to keep on his butt, putting his body through this? Mm -hmm. That's something that you know. That's between Gennaro and his buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in saying that, Earl, some bright spots is that. You know, you did get the likes of Charles Trott getting some expert. Mm -hmm. uh, Batting and Burley. Burley. Kyrie Smith. Uh, uh, C.J. Otterbridge. C.J. Otterbridge. Youngsters. 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 You know, so. uh, Makai Simmons, mm -hmm. he's been getting his first taste. Yeah. You know, well, I won't say first taste, but getting his taste. Steven Bremer coming Steven along. Steven coming along. So, the guys like Steven Otterbridge, um, Gennaro, and even Dion, mm -hmm. just hanging around these guys. Um, I'm just hoping these youngsters, and this is what I this is what I hope because sometimes I don't see it translate. No, right. I'm hoping for this bunch of guys when they go back to their clubs, taking that can, professionalism and that experience, you. and bring your play, bring your teammates up to that level. Don't go back down to your. I had a talk with a former captain, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna call his name because you know it's not it's not important at the moment. Mm. A former Bermuda captain, right. And I asked him that question. How come we expect our boys to be professional when we're not professional when we're home? Mm. But when we get into a tournament or a competition, mm -hmm. we expect somebody to flip a light switch, and all of a sudden now, uh, things happen. We got to follow by these rules and mm. guidelines, timing and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I joked around, uh, just naming County. Right. And we joked about Flats last year with County, whereas they done all this warm up, and I think it tired them out because <laughs> they never done it all year. <laughs> <laughs> There's always been right 45 minutes to an hour prior to the game. Yeah, that's usually really me and 10 minutes. Who won the thoughts? Yeah, that's yeah, what we were, yeah. I mean, that's the week to week. Mm -hmm. like, we can go around to Cricket Field. And, and see the same thing. And, and then to yeah. see guys warm down, like, that, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and you see that in the national setup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we don't see trans. Like, okay, let's majority. There's yeah. a few teams that do do it. Mm -hmm. right? But we don't see it translate across the board. To the club set up. To yeah. the club set up. And I hope we take a page out of our other sport. Mm -hmm. Football. Yeah. Whereas, with, not only just with the National Academy, but when I say take a page, as trying to trickle down mm -hmm. certain good elements that we need to go by. Yeah. From, from the top teams to our academies to our national teams that so when we get into competitions it's not okay we're fish out of water right right because we like sports we said it many times a lot of it is mental mm -hmm. and if you think about all the things that you shouldn't be thinking about right right it's gonna affect you so long term I think as a country we gotta we gotta figure out what we wanna do mm -hmm. with our national team but do, do we want to support it because mm -hmm. if we are, we need to support it. And that's what I was going to say. We need to make sure whatever decisions are made, you you openly talk about it so everybody can get on board. Yeah. You can't keep having meetings and then, what was your postmortem? Well, what happened? And you know, and then somebody says something, well, we discussed it in our postmortem. Well, why haven't you come out to say what you discussed and what was the outcome and yeah, we how we're going to address certain things and how <clears throat> we, we can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results i mean i believe honestly Earl, i believe there is there is we're prime for a cricket renaissance mm -hmm. and some people might think i'm crazy no I, I, but I if agree. we go watch the under 11s in the last few years there is a crop that's coming through mm -hmm. there is a bunch of kids that are going away to schools um playing cricket mm -hmm. um, it could be more right something that we could be looking into yeah we could be looking at sending our kids to regions where they are playing a lot more cricket mm -hmm. than they have and having professional handlers at the time see we only think and this is what was a big problem that football had until they addressed it with a lot of parents a lot of parents decided to up and go to england thinking 
I want to put my kid in an academy. I want him to play for Manchester United. I want him to play for Manchester City, Chelsea. That's Tottenham. what we saw. Though. Right, right. When they addressed it, there's like, hold on. If they go to colleges in the U.S., learn their skill there, mm-hmm. get their education, mm-hmm. the opportunities now become far greater because you get recognized not only in the U.S., but when you play for the national sport, you get recognized globally. So I think the mindset of the individuals who are running the association got to a few of the parents to say, hold on, slow down. Don't just go because you're a fish out of water. In, in, in a place like England, a big place like that, they're going to first look at their own. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, Well, I'll just, just b- piggyback off that. We have what? Three guys over in the... Um, in, 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 well, we have Estonia, <laughs> right. we have Sweden, we have... Yeah, so yeah. we have... That block, uh, yeah. the Eastern block, yeah. as we call it. Yeah, so, you know, but, but they're still professionals. Still professionals. Because they're not in England, do we not recognize their accomplishment? And, and, and let's go back to David Baskell. Yeah. He got Sean when he was in Bermuda because he played in a, what they considered an indoor. He was a professional, a, a professional football player. And, and you know, and, and, and now and makes look, a living out of it. <laughs> look what they done. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think I, we have examples. Yeah. Um, I just think we we need to listen. We need to listen. And That's I true. would be serious to say these players mm-hmm. that went on this tour have the opportunity to speak their mind. Mm-hmm. Yes, sometimes, like family, mm-hmm. there's going to be some harsh things. Yeah. Might be even personal. But once it's out. But once it's out. It's out. Now I know where it stands. Mm-hmm. I know where I have to do for myself or mm-hmm. what we have to do collectively. Mm-hmm. But I think we we really have to have these because if you keep, if you just keep bottling it up, it will explode. Yeah, yeah. And I do not want mm-hmm. to be reading about some craziness, you know, because of how media is. So mm. it's going to be interesting how what happens with them. Now, I hope with the ICC, we know there's, that's a whole nother kettle of fish as mm. far as problems as when it comes to the associate countries. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they'll invest some more money and opportunities for right. the associate companies, countries to play, mm-hmm. especially in our region. Yeah. But if not, we still, like I said, if we're going to be continue to play then we still, we got to find ways. Yeah, definitely. With or without ICC. And I know it's going to come down to dollars and cents. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed, it mm-hmm. will be. But it, if we don't seem to have the buy-in with our major stakeholders, then I expect a company to invest in you. Yeah. So, a lot of talking to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have more after this message from our sponsor. You may have heard, Digistyle is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office and you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the home network. Well, Jay, before we move on to the next, I just want to talk a little bit about um, a word that has been bantered around Bermuda in sport Mm -hmm. and in social uh, areas, and that's a group calling themselves the Belongers. This is a group of people who have uh, come to the island and they have kids who are not Bermudian, mm-hmm. but they're looking for their, their kids to represent Bermuda mm-hmm. in various sports. Mm-hmm. Internationally, whenever our kids represent the country, um, there are regulations that a passport a valid passport must be produced and sent um, in order for a athlete to represent that country. These people do not have a Bermuda passport. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And their kids don't have a Bermuda passport. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm not. Well, let's put it like this: some of them may, the, the adults may have a passport, but the kids don't have a passport. Mm-hmm. They've been to court. Mm-hmm. They've won one part of the case, and they're trying to get. They're trying to make it where they their kids can represent Bermuda. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, the sporting bodies are ha- their hands are tied. Mm-hmm. But it's becoming a big issue because some of them feel as if they deserve the right to represent Bermuda. Okay. I know I'm just throwing this on you. And I, I, I can see there's wheels spinning. Right. We, we touched on it a bit just before this. Yes. But we also touched on it back with the Carifta swimming team. Yes. Yes. So you see where my head's going. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's if we're looking at the country mm-hmm. as a whole, mm-hmm. we talked about competition. Mm-hmm. Some of the people who have been some of our greatest athletes were born in another country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm not against it but here's my caveat to that what are we sacrificing yes and if we have an athlete mm -hmm. that's on the same level Mm -hmm. and I'm looking at just level yes then that athlete should not be sacrificed and that's where I think some of these sporting bodies are making their point if but the belongers feel as if that should be the sacrifice that person shouldn't go my kid should go <clears throat> well like i said that's 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 where you're not entitled You're right <laughs> that that's that's entitlement mm-hmm. um the bermudian athlete or the bermudian it should have the right mm-hmm. to represent their country if they're on par mm-hmm. Now, if they're not on par, you can you can you can you can argue. Right, right. There is an argument. There. Right, but then it comes down to what say, documentation are you and, sending? Well, but this well, I mean that will work itself out. Um, when I when they say documentation, you, we know this too. You know, when it, it, if if an athlete is far superior than, let's say the the belonger athlete mm-hmm. is far superior than the Bermudian athlete, we know documents will get worked out. You know that I know ministers and everybody. Somebody have some. There's a loophole in everything. You know this. Well, I yeah, it. it's it just happened. it just hasn't happened in Bermuda. Right, but it happens. Yeah, it happens everywhere it else. Happens I mean, we've seen we've seen. We use the example of and cricket. That's why I don't. That's why I do not um, knock it because of the fact that it. This a norm. Mm-hmm. Well, I want you to explain. Um, and just we use cricket just now. Listen, mm-hmm. I want you to explain Owen Morgan, who's the captain of England's, um, I believe, well, I know he's captain of the 2020 side. And the 50 and over the 50 over. Right. Explain the situation, please. As long as he didn't play for Ireland for a two year period, he becomes first, first of all, First of all, where was he born? Ireland. Ireland? Yes. Who also has a. ICC team. He's played in the ICC um, uh, World Cup. And he played in the ICC yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Captain of the team too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But now, mm-hmm. he's the captain of England. Yes. Yeah. So, it's not like things have never happened before. Right. Kevin, rules, rules are a little different. Kevin Peterson, born Ke- in South I Africa. I Kevin Peterson. Yeah. Look, you've had, you've had West Indian I, players I, playing for the USA. That's right. I can go back to Graham Hick. We had... West, there, there was a, West Indian men play for England. Yeah. There was, there was a big to-do... When um, it was a in, uh, USA fast bowler had played for the West Indies, and then within the two-year period played for USA against Bermuda. I can't remember. It his was name. I, I, I remember. Stanford. Ooh, I can't was it Stanford? Um, but anyway, we played against them, yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. some. I mean, but because technically, well, I don't know how the, the 
would have allowed it to happen because I would have said, no, we ain't playing. Right. You but, know, but they ended up playing, and there's something to do with the fact that he was a resident in the USA. Yeah, so, and, so there, there are... There are there are ways that this happens. But different sports my, have different rules. My only thing is, is what I said before, is the entitlement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you, that athlete's on par... Mm-hmm. We'll see how it plays out in the courts. And that's... And, and that's... Because that's the bottom point. line is, to represent Bermuda, you need a Bermuda passport. Yeah. Internationally. And I mean, be, be honest with you, they have to still fulfill all the requirements of being a citizen, yeah, a resident, right, right. See, don't don't just mm-hmm. use the passport mm-hmm. just to, for me, just to play the sport, but don't, um, how what is it, contribute to the community, right, right, right. You know, because in actual fact, look what anything can happen. Your parents could turn around. Because they're from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. After you get this right to represent Bermuda, your parents in two years can say, "You know what? We're out of here," and then go find another place. Yeah. Now what? So, <clears throat> I just think it's got to be very, as as Bugs Bunny said, very careful, carefully sorted yes, out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because it can open up Pandora's box, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think there have been. They're really doing the right thing. Yeah. They've, 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 but like I said, now the pressure's on. It's out into the courts, and mm-hmm. let's see what comes out of it. Sure. Well, Jay, this coming Friday night at the National Sports Center, the third area permit meet will take place. Had a press conference earlier with Don Arena, the president of the Bermuda National Athletic Association, Jessica Lewis, and the Pink Horror King. Yes. As well as Trey Houston. So, Trey, this coming Friday night is the uh, third area permit meet. Um, what could one expect from, from, from you this time around? Uh, a great performance, like always. Um, every time I feel my back's against the wall, I come home and I compete. I rise to the occasion. So I'm um, feeling confident enough to come out and run an executed race. And hopefully, you know, the outcome will be, will be great and victorious. Um, it's always great to come uh, compete in front of the home crowd. Um, it always been a dream come true to uh, let people see, you know, what your hard work can, you know, lead you to or whatnot. Um, Commonwealth uh, race behind me, you know. Um, I was always told you're as good as your last race, so I'm not gonna really be focusing on what happened then. It's all about now, and um, like I said, I'm gonna come out and give it my all for in front of the home crowd and. Like I said, I'll come out victorious and go from there. Now, a lot of people believe speed is the key for, say, the 100. It's technical as well, isn't it? Very technical. Um, if you don't put yourself in the race early, especially if you don't have a good start, you can find yourself trying to play catch-up. And with me, I don't really have a great start. So my top end really takes care of the rest of the race. But with me running with... People that ran sub 10 or 10 no, I have to be there with the first 30. So you guys always know I'm always getting put in the kitchen. It's always some hot competition, but like I said, I'm not gonna run away from it. I'm gonna lace up and just be ready. Now you, you get into the field here in Bermuda with some, some well-known uh, Olympians, Commonwealth game medalists and all. How do you feel that kind of gets your blood flowing for, for competition? I mean, it, it makes me feel good that, you know, I'm lining against legit, legitimate people. Like, you know, it's just not any any type of athlete that they just find, like, that just runs, like, 10-6 or 10-5. Like, these are athletes, these are elite athletes. So, you know, if you actually do your research, you know, you'll actually see that the very, very high caliber athletes. So, um, for me to just compete against them is just an honor. But at the same time, Anything can happen any day, you know. Um, I'm proved that many a times, you know, when it matters. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to be ready for Friday night, and I hope all these grand, the whole grandstands filled up for, you know, ju- not just for me, but for Jessica and Tyrone, you know, all the local athletes. So I ask you guys to come out and just support us. Well, Sam, what, what have you been doing since coming up? Are you doing just training, I guess? Or- uh, yeah, I've been training. Um, since Commonwealth, uh, I took like a few days off because I had like a little niggle. Um, but, you know, things have been going well in training. 
I was just telling Bears and like, you know, every time I get back on your horse, I get knocked back off. But, you know, it's just how the game goes, you know. Um, you know, we're human, you know, we get injured. But, you know, when you get injured, you just have to train back harder to get back where you are to bounce back. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm going to be ready for Friday night. I have two more training sessions and then uh, just rest up, hydrate, ice, recover, be ready for Friday night. Yes, um, yeah, uh, actually, Devon Bean actually hooked me up with him. Um, great coach, great guy, you know, I feel my last two seasons would be great with him. You know, I feel after 2020, you know, I think it's almost start uh, calling it a day. Um, and last things are going really well, but I'll, I'll spend my off season here. And then by the time the track season comes, I have to leave. Like, so um, that's going to be the best thing for me. But as far as that, um, me and Devon, you know, we've been working, trying to put things together and we'll just go from there. Say again. Um, I probably I'm gonna spend my summer here, uh, off season here, and get back to training here, and then by December, January, I'll be out because you know the next two years is very important to me, um, also to dress I, I believe, um, because we have World Championships in Doha, and then Tokyo is the following year, so these next two years are gonna be critic critical. Yeah. Oh, Jess, you you'll be on. Game. <laughs> yeah. But this time's a little different. Last year you've done the 800. Um, this year you're doing the one and the two. Everybody knows your accomplishment in the one and the Pan Am. Are you trying to emulate that performance again? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always the goal to come across the line first. Um, and definitely to do it in front of a home crowd would be absolutely phenomenal. So I really hope that Bermuda comes out and supports and uh, really looking forward to it. <laughs> um, we actually got out uh, last week for the first time out on the track, which was really nice. It was a nice warm day. Um, I did have a crash uh, in February, so I'm still kind of recovering from that. I'm, also, I'm a lot better than what I was, um, so still trying to get back into full training and that kind of thing. And um, we're changing my seating a little bit in my chair because I'm going to be getting a new one this year. Um, so kind of just looking at maybe a different position that I might be a little bit more powerful in and so there's a lot in the works right now. <laughs> now, as we all know, you, you specialize in the sprinting. Um, taking the bend on the 200, how difficult is it in the chair getting the start and then getting off that bend? Uh, it definitely is a little bit of a slower start on the turn just because you want to be cautious about how much speed you're picking up going around the turn as well and that also um, like the wind is also a factor, especially for me because I'm not that heavy. Um, so you kind of have to make sure that you have the right speed going into it and then coming off the turn, make sure that you're, um, you start accelerating coming out of the turn, whereas other people may just start accelerating on the straight. Um, so it's all just kind of finding that advantage point. Um, well, uh, two of the um, athletes that are coming down, Elena and Alex, are actually married, and they're bringing in um, their daughter, and <laughs> the daughter just says, I want to go to the water. <laughs> so I think they're definitely looking forward to that. Um, but I think Elena and Jess, uh, being here last year, they're really excited because they understand the hype that came with it last year, and we're hoping that there'll be even more this year. Um, and then it'll be exciting for Curtis, Isaiah, and Alex to come in and kind of witness what the girls saw last year and, and hopefully have a bigger event this year. Pressure on credit? I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's going really well, yeah. It's um, it's definitely interesting to um, go from a teammate relationship to now a coach relationship, um, but it's definitely going well. And um, I think one of the greatest things about Curtis is that he knows a lot of the athlete side, so he knows a lot of um, like the pressure that you put on yourself as an athlete going into a race or even just kind of the nerves going into the start line, so he understands that um, from kind of a different perspective.
Yeah, definitely. I mean, last year was absolutely incredible. The amount of support that we got during the race and after the race was amazing. And um, I'm just so lucky that I get the opportunity to share wheelchair track racing with Bermuda because uh, that opportunity doesn't come along very, very often being the only person here. Um, and also me being away training in Canada, I don't get to be here that often. So it's it's definitely amazing when I can share it with with our country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had a smaller meet at training camp, um, but that was kind of just our little group that we did there. It wasn't any pressure or anything on it, but so this will be kind of the first big one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, definitely the wind will play a, black, a factor in it, but um, it's just about, um, for us, kind of the technique that we would use is just make sure that we stay down so that we're out of the wind as much as possible. Curtis, um, again, welcome to Bermuda. Thank you. Um, this coming Friday, you get the opportunity to, to experience what Jessica experienced last year. Um, you've, you've trained on this track, you've been to this track several times, but having the opportunity to, to race on this track how does that make you feel um excited uh from what jessica's told me you know there's a lot of support out here and uh you know i'm excited to see what it's all about you know um my experiences on the track not in training not so much excitement but you know with the crowd and everything i think it'll be really good i know i know this track is not set up conducively for for wheelchairs and so forth it's a bit spongy for you guys so you're just a little more difficult yeah we um we sink in a little bit more um because we're always in contact with it uh runners they kind of bounce off of it with every step um especially with me being a little bit heavier um than jessica uh i sink in a little bit more unfortunately <laughs> uh, so yeah it's a little bit more difficult you know you're you're kind of digging through more so than you are gliding on top. Right. right. Now you come in with medals, obviously Commonwealth uh, uh, Olympic Olympic Paralympic, Paralympic, Paralympic medal. medal. Yeah. Um, so that kind of you, you become sort of a, a favorite for for what you'll be doing here in Bermuda, and because of the connection that you have with Jessica's family and, and all, kind of makes you like. Take the Canadian stuff over. Can you become a Bermuda favorite? Um, well, like Jess has been bugging me about, uh, this will probably be my last time wearing Canadian stuff as an athlete. Um, I've taken over uh, her, um, coaching for her. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of transitioning into that, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I guess it'll be a lot more Bermuda than it will be Canada clothing. <laughs> <laughs> from now on. So how is that rule kind of, you are, how are you adjusting to that rule um, of, of now being more of a coach as, a, as not so much as an athlete anymore? It's different. It's a lot different. Um, it's a lot more thinking than it is just the grunt work of here's your workout, go do it. Now I got to think, okay, what can I do to make her better? What can I do technique wise, position wise? You know, in the training sessions, what what can I do to improve her? Whereas, you know, being an athlete, it's here's your workout. You know, go do it. <laughs> now, as she stated earlier, it, it, you have an edge from being an athlete, being in that position. Does that give you an advantage of what she could possibly be going through? Um, definitely on the the um, anxiety side, the the nerves everything like that I can understand where she's um, at with that um, but a lot of people say that uh, athletes don't make great coaches and I don't know about that like you know you, I think they're different types of coaches you know they they don't they have that athlete side so they understand and they try I think they can try to help through that stuff more so than just a coach that never really been in the competition scene um just because it is a lot different you know obviously coaches do have nerves and and 
the anxiety and whatever else, you know, but it, it, it's definitely a different types of nerves and anxieties. Um, whereas if you're the athlete, you know, there's a lot more pressure on yourself that you do. Like, I know from my experiences, I've, I've put so much pressure on myself where I've actually put myself out of a race because I got so nervous, I got so tight that I just couldn't perform. And I lost that race because of that. How, how do you plan to make sure that, that when you're preparing Jess, she doesn't make that same mistake? Um, lots of confidence in her, you know. Um, she is very good at training. Uh, a lot better than I was when I trained. <laughs> so she's got that drive with her and, you know, the confidence I have in her that she can compete well um, will make me more relaxed, I guess, you know. She's done the work, so it's now it's the fun time. You may have heard Digistyle is bringing the only true fiber to the home network to Bermuda. But what does that mean? Fiber to the home is the fastest and most reliable way to access the internet. And with Digistyle's fiber internet, the fiber goes all the way into your house. It doesn't just stop at the street. That means you'll get consistently fast speeds you can rely on. Think of it as a brand new internet highway that goes all the way into your home or office and you can be one of the first to enjoy it. Visit digistylebermuda.com forward slash fiber to register your interest in Bermuda's only true fiber to the home network. Well, Jay, over the weekend, the Department of Youth Sport and Recreation had a uh, Coaches to Success program, four modules um, of different levels of coaching and different understanding of coaching. Uh, Calix Crab, a former Major League Baseball player who now owns his own company that deals with mentoring coaches, mm -hmm. uh, motivational speaker and all. He was on island. Got a chance to speak to him on the final day of the conference up at Cedar Bridge. Um, let's get the interview with Calix Crab. Mr. Crab, thank you for coming to Bermuda. Obviously, um, the Department of Youth and Sport um, wanted to bring in someone who, with, with some experience in the professional world and now turning their, their attention to coaching. But what, what message do you bring to these coaches and how, how do you deliver that? where they get the best out of it. You know, I think it's important for us to um, always remind coaches that the role that they play in society extends well beyond just um, athletic development. Um, we know that um, sports as a whole has a great way of creating um, culture, creating um, an environment that is conducive towards helping um, young individuals become contributing members to society. And we really believe that youth sports is a, is a chance to, um, to be a development zone to create great people. Now, you, you've played in the professional baseball league. Um, what does it take to get to that level? You know, it's, um, it's a number of things. One of the things is to have a great support staff. Um, as a young kid growing up, I was very fortunate, even though I didn't grow up with a whole lot, growing up in public housing in the, Vir in the Virgin Islands, I had a great family. I had, I had a great um, group of people that were able to, to give me the, the, the things that I needed, love, to give me um, potentially equipment, um, really just to give me the steady attack, the, the positive mindset to believe that my dreams can come true. And so I think family um, support, the whole community of Bermuda is a, is a great way if they can get behind young athletes and help them work towards their goals is, is how you can make a, a challenging task like making it to the major leagues come true. Now you're, you're in the coaching field now, um, what message do you bring to, to other coaches because uh, being a professional athlete, you, you've sat in a, a locker room where not all the time it's been a positive conversation. So, so how do you then mold these coaches in Bermuda to make sure that those type of things cease and we move in a positive direction to get the best out of the athlete. Well, you know, I see it uh, kind of a two-part um, issue. I believe, um, you know, as a former professional athlete, I had to come to the realization that one day I would no longer be playing that sport. Um, as difficult that was that was it as it was for me to understand that I tried my best to remember that baseball would give me an opportunity to be successful in life um, and also for, in terms of having a positive experience while I was playing um, I was very fortunate I was around some extremely um, good players Greg Maddox is one that comes to mind Trevor Hoffman Tony Clark who's not a, um, the, the director of the Players Association and I realized right then that it's really about connection it's really about really trying to understand the individual and get to know people so that maybe one day um, you can share those same experiences with others and that can help them move on. So my experience as a professional was good. I did have one or two bad ones, but for the most part, I really can't complain. 
Now, playing a sport that you love, and coming from British Virgin Islands, but playing a sport that you love in front of thousands of people, remember the first time you stepped onto the field and what that, uh, what that feeling was like? Uh, um, definitely remember the first time that I stepped onto the field. Um, even the minor league game, the first minor league game that I had, it was in Idaho Falls, um, Idaho. And I remember feeling like I'd accomplished something, but with the understanding that I still had a long ways to go if I wanted to reach my ultimate goal of making it to the major leagues. And as, you, as I fast forwarded um, six years, to making my major league debut in San Diego, um, having my parents in the stands was one that one of those experiences that I probably will never forget. Um, because when you when you're a young boy growing up, especially coming from a small island, you have a lot of people that are that you believe they're on your backs, right? You wanna you wanna get them to experience something much bigger than just what what I, what I was doing. It wasn't just about Calix. It really was about a whole culture, a whole island, um, so that we could motivate kids behind me and give them the feeling like what they can that they can accomplish something that might seem somewhat impossible. We now have a young man who was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles in Adam Hole uh, last year, or this year, this year, um, and he's in the minor league. So um, obviously people want to see him in the majors, but I just heard you say it took you six years. Six it's, years. It's, it's a process that you get, they, they take you through, isn't it? Very much so. And one of the things that um, people need to understand about um, the process is sometimes there's going to be some really nice ups and there's going to be some pullback, right? There's going to be some falling back, but that's very much a part of it is you get to learn a lot through results, but you also get to learn a lot through some of your, your failures as well. And it, it, it's not always consistent, right? But as long as that young man in, in, his, in his position, if he can just stay set some goals and keep his mind fixated on those goals and really try not to take no for an answer um there's no question that he can attain his um his dreams the biggest thing is get around people that support his visions as well because in the minor leagues it can be challenging it's a very competitive environment you're playing against some um, people that potentially is trying to take your job and so for him he just needs to keep his eye on the prize and really don't worry about others around him um and i don't mean that in a negative way i literally mean focus on what his goals are and there's no question that he can make it become a reality it's not impossible it's not impossible if i can do it you can do it well i want to thank you for coming to Bermuda. hopefully you come back very soon i hope to come back soon as well all right thank you for thank you me. well you heard it um and this is sometimes we just gotta just keep just listen mm -hmm. just listen some things we we know that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it seems like when someone else tells us, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear that before. I just told you all the whole way, man. But because it came from me, all right, you got it. I'm not saying this happened now, but, but <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not trying to call nobody. <laughs> but sometimes we just need some reinforcement. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. I said, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. We're all humans, mm -hmm. and maybe we do share. Um, human experiences yeah. rather be where you know different parts of the world we will share same experiences mm -hmm. for us even when it comes to mentality wise motivating wise and mm -hmm. stuff like that you know everybody's different you know what might motivate me might not motivate you true you know but i may what motivates me it might be the same thing as somebody else in virginia right 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 you know so different little things it all depends on you know, and, and, and you, you you take that experience mm -hmm. and say, okay, you know what, well, let me try this with him. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, you know, you had very um, disciplinary coaches. Yes. Who would show that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> give you a tongue lashing. But we know that can only go so far as yeah. certain, this generation. They shot you off. Man. Yeah, they yeah. shot you off quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be some other ways that you need to reach to a you know reach a person or try to get the most out of a person mm. um you see that when on guys in the gym working out right you know some days when your muscles are sore that i hey his hey come on two more I'm like look <laughs> <laughs> let's switch <laughs> <laughs> you be me <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's different ways so mm. to hear this from this gentleman here i think is well appreciated yeah well last night at the national sports center the bermuda international football festival got underway Bermuda's under-19 team taking on the West Ham's under-19 team. That match ended 1-1. And then an Azores under-19 team beat up a Bermuda select, league select team, 3-1. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, it's underway. That's what I could say. It's underway. Mm -hmm. um, it's football. Man, it usually wouldn't be football for some of these players locally. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it's an opportunity to get some experience against um, some organized, and when I say organized, in a professional manner, organized teams, and just to get a feel for what they're going through. I know the West Ham team struggled a bit last evening with the humidity. Oh, yeah. Um, it was warm. Um, and pretty much the Azores team would have had the same problem, even though it was later on at night. But um, adjustments were made. <clears throat> you know, so. Well, it seems like this was the theme of our whole show today. This is a prime opportunity for our boys mm -hmm. to, like you said, get some knowledge, get some information, mm -hmm. meet all the guys, become friends with these mm -hmm. guys, because when you start to learn about their, they're in a professional setup, as you were saying, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then some of those things you could bring to your own game. Yeah. And some of these things are absolutely free. It's just a matter of you dealing with what you want I'm to get asking, the best out of you. I'm asking a player who's going to be on my soil until Sunday or Monday. Hey, when do you guys train again? Because I want to come and watch to see I'm what watching. they do. Let me see the drills that you do. Yeah. And you know what? Hey, let me go try these drills. And let because me if anybody was watching last night, mm -hmm. they would have seen ball handling control, no matter which way the ball was coming to play. Mm -hmm. I'm talking sharp. Their first attention was to kill the ball yeah. and then move it and knock and, it. And, and you say that, Earl, what, if we go watch our FA Cup final here on the island mm. or any, any Bermuda team playing up at the National Stadium, what's always been the biggest First problem? touch. First the touch. First touch. <laughs> ball bouncing away. I mean, a couple of Bermuda players at times showed a bit of skill with close control, well, we're talking about but 90% of the right. time, uh -huh. the ball was bouncing away right. from players. And, and yeah. this, is, this is our field. Mm -hmm. So for somebody, for a team to come down here, mm -hmm. and, and it shows, and this stuff doesn't happen overnight. Oh, no, so no, this no, is no. something that, them. like I said, it's, it's an opportunity for us to, to get knowledge from them. Mm -hmm. Now, the support... Now, that's a whole other story. Yeah, we'll leave, we we, that, we, we, we leave, we'll <laughs> leave that on another day because... Um, I think it is a good concept, mm -hmm. especially with the likes of Sir Clyde. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not been nighty yet, but right. to me, he'll always be Sir Clyde. Mm -hmm. And the networking that he have, obviously, with his uh, West Ham. Mm -hmm. I, have, I remember I did tell you, I spoke with him a few weeks ago, and he's like, look, I just want to make sure the boys, because, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the boys get the best out of it and get right. the information. And, that, and that's what Sir Clyde's about. Mm -hmm. The boys are getting the experience. Right. So, it will always be a success in that area. Right. I just think we have to do a lot more as trying trying to get the support for our boys. And we see that throughout the season. So am I surprised right now? No. No, no, no. Well, this coming Saturday, Jay, the Bermuda National Men's Rugby Team will take on USA South at the National Sports Center, 530. Um, we'll get the rundown of the Bermuda team selected. The team consists of Pernell Bringman, Connor McGlynn, Dustin Archibald, Peter Dunkley, Deshaun De Silva, Darren Richardson, Thomas Greenslade, Aldo Campbell, Thomas Healy, Brian Archibald, Alex Brown, Alex Dowling, Connor McGowan, Nigel Burgess, Dan Cole, Mike Williams, Jan Cedinho, Danny Powell, John Quigley, Corey Boyce, Janico Francis, Mikey Dill, and Shai Smith. RJ? Yeah, I mean... Beautiful. I love the theme of today's show. Mm -hmm. I don't think we meant to go there. Yeah, yeah. But hey, it is what it is. It happened. But I'm actually looking forward to Thursday. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of issues that I think we need to address. Uh, we had a couple of forfeits over the weekend in mm -hmm. open cricket. This is what? Week three? Week three. Week, week three or four, yeah. So we like got forfeits. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's um, we sort of. Well, we talked about crisis. Really sorry. Even if it, it, at the national level, it, but it involves all cricket. You know? All cricket. So um, we will elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I just remember what came to me. Oh, you know we're in May, right? Mm-hmm. 2-4? Oh, this yeah. This year is 2-5. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't talked about much of it, so we said we was going to be to me. So come Thursday, we'll talk a little bit while well, we'll start talking about some of the favorites for our Bermuda Day half, half marathon. marathon. Mm -hmm. oh. That's good. Uh, hopefully, I have an interview for you. And then I just give you something for a n actually, oh no, probably Monday. Because I'm going to be actually, what's for Tuesday? Next week, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. For next week, Tuesday show. We'll have, we should have a good announcement. 
Okay. Good announcement. When's birth? <laughs> next week. Next week. Next week. You know. Okay. Just say a good announcement. Well, folks, JS can leave us hanging. Have a good night. Have a good night from the Digital Sports Show.